Howdy, partners. We're talking cards from Thunder Junction for use in the 99 of your commander decks today. And I'm supposed to put on a cowboy hat, but I don't actually own a Stetson. Um, I, I do have this straw pork pie from back when I was into men's haberdashery. I don't have a sheriff's star. Ooh, but I do have this. Eh? Huh? That's pretty good. So... Whether you prefer to play commander in a saloon with your posse or out on Main Street with your worst nemesis at high noon, there's a veritable bevy of new cards that are just perfect for your deck. All right, we're done with the cowboy thing, right? Uh, great. Look, even if cowboys aren't your thing, the cards themselves are actually pretty fun, especially when you draft. But if you only want singles for your commander decks, don't just buy booster pack after booster pack and rip wrappers to get them. No, buy singles instead of the cards that you want. Ah, but which singles from Thunder Junction are best for commander for use in the 99? There's a lot of great new legendaries, but let's talk about which cards are actually good in the body of your decks. And don't worry because Oh God, I'm your partner here in this town. And I've, no, we're not doing that, we're not doing that. I've gone ahead and selected the top five best new cards for use in the 99, plus a pretty cool honorable mention. So let's take a look. And also I'm giving away this Fallout Collector Booster Box and all of the new Commander decks. Make them appear around me because I don't have them in hand yet, but they'll be out by the time I've got my next Whatnot stream and I'm giving all of this away and more. Just tune in on April 9th at 10.30 a.m. and you might walk away for free shipped anywhere in the world with a booster box of these Collector Fallout cards. Do you remember Fallout? That, that was like, a million years ago, but it, it 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 actually is pretty cool cards for them. Even if you don't dig Fallout, the, what the cards do is is really cool. We got Outlaws of Thunder Junction Commander decks. I'm giving it all away, possibly to you, and also fifteen dollars to spend on Magic cards or whatever you want on whatnot. You see, Whatnot is just if Twitch and eBay had a baby. People have items up for sale or auction, and you can bid on them or just buy them outright. There's tons of magic cards and products and other cool nerdy collectibles. And when you use my invite code, you get $15 to spend towards any of it, on all of it. And I've got all kinds of awesome stuff in the Tolarian Community College Whatnot store as well, not to mention these cool giveaways that you might walk away with. And everybody who creates a new account using my code gets that $15. Just go to www.whatnot.com forward slash invite forward slash Tolarian College. You get that $15 credit, you can spend it in anybody's Whatnot store, including mine, and tune in on April 9th at 10.30 a.m. Pacific, and you might just walk away with the Thunder Junction Commander decks that should be superimposed, I'm guessing, right around here, and Fallout Collector Boosters and other cool things. The Academic is now at retail, so this is in local game stores near you, but I'm gonna be giving some away on this stream and signing them and stuff like that, too. So if you want an Academic deck box, April 9th, tune in, yeah! Thunder Junction, let's go. What not? All right. As always, we should begin with an honorable mention. For Outlaws at Thunder Junction, our honorable mention is a card that is quite strong, but also highly restrictive. Presenting Kellen Joins Up. Kellen Joins Up is a legendary enchantment for one of each Bant mana. When it enters the battlefield, you may plot a card with three mana value or less from your hand. Anytime a legendary creature enters play on your side of the field, put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control. Anytime each creature. A lot of the Legend Joins Up cards from this set are sweet role players with impactful enter the battlefield effects and cool triggered abilities, but Kellen Joins Up is my favorite of the bunch. If you plot a three mana card with Kellen Joins Up, then you effectively spent zero mana on Kellen Joins Up. That means you got the card's pump ability essentially for free. What's more, because Kellen Joins Up is an enter the battlefield ability, it gets even better anytime you can blink the card, such as with Brago or 
displace her kitten. In order to maximize Kellen Joins Up, you'll need a deck that makes a wide board of creatures and has plenty of legends to trigger him. A Joda, the unifier deck, is therefore the absolute best home for Kellen Joins Up, but he's good in any deck with Bant colors that meets those criteria. The more flicker effects you pack, the better the card gets, both because you can flicker Kellen Joins Up and also because you can flicker your legends to pump your squad to greater and greater heights. Kellen Joins Up is the kind of card that has very little downside for putting in your deck and can get out of hand very quickly if left unchecked. Honestly, I'd probably have included Kellen Joins Up in the proper top five if the color identity of this card wasn't so restricted. Otherwise, it's really fantastic and worthy of honorable mention. So speaking of that proper list, let's get to it and begin down at number five with Archmage's Newt, a 2-2 Salamander mount for one and a blue. A mount is a new creature subtype in Outlaws of Thunder Junction that is very similar to vehicles. Creatures that are mounts can be saddled by another creature, similarly to how vehicles can be crewed. The key differences are that mounts are still creatures when they aren't saddled and that you can therefore still attack and block and also crucially, you may only mount a creature as a sorcery, no saddling on your opponent's turn to block, though the mount can still block without being mounted. Generally, mounts attack more effectively when saddled, such as the Archmage's Newt, which gives a spell in your graveyard flashback anytime it connects for combat damage on a player. But if it does so while saddled, that spell's flashback cost becomes zero. Essentially, at a baseline, Archmage's Newt is a repeatable Snapcaster Mage that can be even stronger if it connects while well saddled. This is a great card in most blue commander decks that have instants or sorceries, but gets better the more of the following things that are true. If you are capable of giving creatures unblockable, it gets better. If you have enough creatures that add up to or simply have three power so that the newt will attack while saddled reliably, it gets better. If you have some highly impactful spells that are incredibly good to cast multiple times, and especially if their flashback cost is zero, it gets better. Fun fact, Archmage's Newt is the first 2-2 for one and a blue with no downside that has ever been printed. That's right, every single one of the admittedly very few 2-2s for one and a blue printed previously had a downside of some kind another. Not a single vanilla one in a blue grizzly bear. Even Shacklegeist, which is a great card, has the downside of only being able to block creatures with flying. So not only is this little guy a sweet addition for your blue commander decks, he also quite literally is a groundbreaking figure in the annals of magic history. And how can you not love this guy? Look at how happy he is just to be nominated. Next up, we have a legendary creature who is actually better as a part of the 99 of your deck than he is as a commander. That card is Campbell, Profiteering Mayor, a new version of this classic character from Kaladesh. For one white and a black, you get a human advisor, just like his predecessor, but with a slightly bigger butt, a 2-4 instead of a 2-3. Campbell also has a similarly pesky ability to his previous iteration. Once per turn, when your opponent makes one or more tokens, you make a tapped token copy of each of them. And of course, because he's Campbell, anytime you make a token, Campbell drains your opponents for one life. Now, Campbell could certainly be a fine Orzov commander if a little milk toast. But honestly, I think he's better suited as a role player in the 99 of your Orzov decks rather than at the helm. Think about the applications of this card. Yes, his first ability is gated by a once per turn clause. But if it wasn't, it would be supremely busted. Instead, it's merely good. Your opponent casts a Dockside Extortionist and you get treasures too. They cast Awaken the Woods and you get just as many Dryad Arbors as they do. If your opponent has a token deck with doubling season or any other token doubler, you reap those benefits as well. If they equip Helm of the Host onto something, you're going to get a copy of that something as well. Heck, if someone so much as points a Pongify or Swan Song at someone else's thing, you get an ape or a swan of your own. Again, Campbell triggers only once per turn, which is why he's down here at number four and not up at number one. Your opponents can play around his ability a little bit if they sequence their spells so that their least impactful token gets made first, but a lot of the time they won't have the option to do that, and you'll start amassing a huge board full of your opponent's tokens as the game progresses. And remember, each token you make this way, plus any other tokens you make on your own, will trigger Campbell's second ability, draining the board and keeping your life total nice and buffered.
Now, this next card on the list could make a reasonable claim for a higher slot, but the cards I have left are all good enough that this card wound up at number three. Coming in at number three, we have Key to the Vault. A blue equipment for one and a blue. Key to the Vault has an equip ability of two and a blue and a devastating ability if equipped creature connects with a player. Whenever equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, look at that many cards from the top of your library. You may exile a non-land card from among them. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. You may cast the exiled card without paying its mana cost. Key to the Vault is the second blue card on this list that rewards you for attacking, which is, honestly, an awesome design space for blue to occupy. Right off the bat, Key to the Vault is an excellent value card anytime you're able to connect with any creature. But that's the card's floor, of course. This card is better the higher your creature's power is. But even a one power creature equipped with the key can give you a huge advantage if you can manipulate the top card of your library. This card is naturally best friends with cards like Brainstorm and Sensei's Divining Top, which can set up a huge spell for you to hit, say, an Eldrazi or an Omniscience. Key to the Vault is an instant staple in any blue-based artifact deck, especially if those decks have evasive creatures that you can equip it to. It's also awesome in an Azurius-based equipment deck, thanks to White's access to easy equippers like Sigarda's Aid and Pure Steel Paladin. I know I'm definitely putting it in my Geist of Saint Traft Commander deck, which if you'd like to see in action, by the way, you can check out on this episode of Shuffle Up and Play. Also also linked in this video's description. Best of all, with Key to the Vault, you can even go infinite. Cast your extra turn effect and use Mystic Sanctuary to put it back on top of your library. Attack with your creature equipped with Key, and when it triggers, cast the extra turn effect again. Then use any way to repeatedly pick up a land, like Meluku the Clouded Mirror, to pick up your Mystic Sanctuary and make a 1-1 flyer. On your next extra turn, repeat this process again, and voila, infinite turns. Such a powerful card. As you can see, there are a lot of serious contenders for brand new commander cards that are gonna be great in the 99 of a lot of commander decks, but our top two are some of the best I've seen in a while. Coming in at number two, we have... Number two on this list is Avon Interrupter, a 2-2 bird... <laughs> A 2-2 bird rogue creature with flash and flying for one and double white. When Interrupter enters play, exile target spell. It becomes plotted. The Interrupter also has a hate bear effect. Spells your opponents cast from graveyards or from exile cost two generic more to cast. As a hate bear alone, Avon Interrupter is a strong card in the context of commander, especially when playing against higher power level decks. Decks that play Underworld Breach, for example, will find this card incredibly annoying to deal with. Avon Interrupter Interrupter is also a thorn in the side for many commanders, like Muldratha and Prosper. Finally, a strong commander card that isn't good for Prosper. But let's talk about the interrupting birds enter the battlefield effect, plotting a spell on the stack. This is generally a good way to delay any card for a turn, but is especially good if you can use it to plot your opponent's counter magic. Because they can only cast plotted cards as sorceries, any counter spell you plot with the interrupting bird is exiled permanently. This is also a good way to counter instant that are only good as instants, like Teferi's Protection or Demonic Consultation. Avon Interrupter is reminiscent of a beloved card from Eldritch Moon, Spell Queller. Unlike Spell Queller, though, Avon Interrupter is great with blink effects. Eldrazi Displacer, for instance, can act in tandem with Avon Interrupter to effectively permanently keep a spell in exile. You can also use the Interrupter to save your own spells from counter magic, though it's probably better to just plot your opponent's counter spell rather than your own spell. Avon Interrupter even gets around uncounterable spells, since it exiles the spell rather than countering it. Lastly, Avon Interrupter has several stats that make it highly synergistic with many white-based little guy's strategies. A 2-2 that costs less than 3 mana and has both flash for decks that care about flash and flying for decks that care about flying means Interrupter is going to be great in many kinds of white aggressive decks. Plus, anytime you use the Interrupter to interrupt an opponent's spell, you get to shout squawk, squawk at them. How annoying will that be? I love it! So what is the number one best new card from Commander from Thunder Junction? Well, actually, we've got a sort of tie. It's a series of cards, rares, that utilize a brand new mechanic. Can you guess that mechanic? 
Did you guess the mechanic that I have singled out for the number one spot is Spree? Just take a look at the great train heist, Smuggler's Heist, Final Showdown, and Three Steps Ahead. All four of these cards are going to be awesome in Commander, but rather than spend the whole list talking about Spree, I decided to rope these into a four-way tie for the number one slot. So how does Spree work, you ask? It's easy, it's just kicker. Well, multi-kicker. Well, sort of. When you cast a card with Spree, you pay additional costs for each of its various modes you want to use. Let's take a look at one of my favorite Spree rares for the Commander format as an example, the Great Train Heist. On its surface, Great Train Heist is an instant that costs just a single red mana, but actually it's always going to cost a bit more than that. For an additional two and a red, you untap your creatures and get an additional combat step. For two generic extra, your creatures get plus one plus zero and gain first strike until end of turn. And for just a single additional red mana, choose target opponent. Whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to that player this turn, create a tapped treasure token. Now, you can also pick multiple modes. So if you pay red, red four on Great Train Heist, your creatures get plus one plus zero, first strike, and are untapped and raring to go for an additional combat step. For triple R and two, you instead make a bunch of treasures when your creatures connect, then you get to attack with them again and make even more treasure. And of course, for triple R and four, you get all three modes. Whoa! Spree cards are sweet designs for Commander. They're highly flexible, good mana sinks, and have an artificially small mana cost for any cards that happen to care about that. You can tutor for the cheapest ones with Spellseeker, for example, or copy them with the expansion half of Expansion and Explosion. They're also awesome if you're able to reduce their mana cost, since many of the best uses for these cards do ask for a lot of mana. If you have a Goblin Electromancer or one of the five medallions in play, though, all the modes become much easier to cast. But not all of these spree rares are created equally, however. The black ones, for example, are a little too expensive and not flexible enough to make a huge impact in Commander. One Last Job is also too expensive and inflexible to be much more than a role player in specifically artifact and enchantment decks. And while I do feel that all four of these are the best new cards for Commander, I know many of you out there are still going to want to hear a number one best of the best. So if I really had to, I'd say it's Great Train Heist, followed by Smuggler's Surprise, followed by Final Showdown, and lastly, Three Steps Ahead. But I do feel all four of these deserve a place at number one from Thunder Junction. And there you have it, the best new cards from Outlaws of Thunder Junction for the 99, but now I want to hear from you. Which cards from this set do you think are going to go great inside of Commander decks? Remember, if we're talking about Legendaries, I want to hear about them not as Commander, but as a part of the 99. Let me know in the comments below. And remember, I'm giving this away, the Fallout Collector Booster Box, all of the Outlaws of Thunder Junction Commander decks, Academics, they may be in retail, but they're also on my Whatnot stream and you can tune in and walk away maybe with one of these prizes or many other surprises this April 9th at 10.30 a.m. Pacific. And when you use my invite code, you get $15 credit to spend in my stream in anybody's store on Whatnot. So just go to www.whatnot.com forward slash invite forward slash Tolarian College and sign up for your $15 today. Thank you, Whatnot, for sponsoring this video. Pairs up the stairs, crumpets and tea, next time on Shovel Up and Play. Today, we are doing an educational game of Commander. We are going to teach you what a level 8 Commander deck is. Hi, I'm Lewis Stardust. Today, I'm playing Miram, Sentinel Worm. What's going on, y'all? It's your boy, Joe Johnson. And today, I am playing Preston Garvey, a new Fallout Commander. I'm Vince, also as Peasant Kenobi on the internet, the milkiest man in esports entertainment. And today, I'm playing Mono White out to Adrian. And since we are playing level eight decks, I'm on slivers. If I brought up all your slivers, would it upset you? Do you not see what is on Lua's board? Who has no blood. lands? Who has no lands? Oh no, but what's that instead of the land? Are you gonna be sad if your sliver dies? Like Yeah, I'm gonna be sad if my sliver dies. I'm still gonna do it. <laughs> yeah. A no. hole is an absence of donut. No, <laughs> not a <laughs> ring donut. <laughs> a whole donut doesn't have a hole. How did the jam get in? They didn't teleport it in, bro. <laughs>